Hi everybody and welcome back to my modeling channel. So today we're gonna build a, an A321 NEO scale 144 from Revel. So let's open the box and see what we have inside. So we're gonna start that uh, kit review by the instruction uh, manual. I mean, uh, actually you can see that it's a pretty thick uh, manual. Lots of, uh, it's almost a little booklet or newspaper or magazine, depending on how you want to call that. And so here we start. So you will have all the explanation of uh, the legends, the colors as well, the color panel. Then you have the kit uh, parts and the uh, kit review of uh, the various parts you have it available to you. Then uh, you're gonna have uh, a lot of uh, different uh, description. So you'll have the possibility to do your aircraft uh, with um, the gear up or down. You have the possibility of building the uh, interior as well. So lots of colorful images. So it's uh, one of the nice highlights. And then we're coming down to the, the scheme. So that plane is on is give you is given. I mean the decal sheet you will have. You'll have two types of uh, engine. You'll have the uh, Pratt and Whitney or the Leap engine, and they are both from the factory. So you'll have the 6673 and the 6889 serial numbers, and those are the factory uh, immatriculation, so both are Germans uh, immatriculate. And top view and bottom view, and that's it for basically the instruction sheet. Quite a lot of uh, things actually. Uh, anything new from uh, the decals? A lot of little details like we used to have on the 320 from uh, the past ones. Those ones are still uh, printed in Italy uh, by Hovel, and I have to say that generally speaking, they have a pretty good um, printout from their uh, from their uh, decals. So that's about it for the decals and the colors. So now let's have a, a review of that kit. The kit comes with both engines, so the Pratt and Whitney and the Leap engines. To me, honestly, they look very similar to each other. Um, I can't see very uh, a lot of uh, differences, but uh, I'm sure I'll be able to find out. Or you can put me uh, what is the real difference in the comment box below. I'll be very happy to learn about that. I think there is just a difference on the uh, exhaust that I can notify. I can see, but the rest. So the panel lights are in a very fine um, engravement. And lots of details. The fan disc are a little bit different, but you have the options as well to build it with the uh, that kind of uh, ring in a uh, very light grain color. So that's what we have for our engines. The fuselage come in two parts, and it's a different tooling from the old A320. As you can see, and the rudder is separated and you also have uh, the nose being the Adam will become on a different part as well so that's a little bit different it's a different tooling from the old uh, 320 classic that we have now we're moving on to the undercarriage so we have the main landing gear uh, the wheels are here the nose wheel is here as well and we have different uh, antenna, so some are for SATCOM, the other one for Inmosat, and uh, and what so what what all the different type of antennas we have. So we'll be able to uh, build all the options on depending on which airliner we we choose. We have the radome, and uh, same for the shocklets. Everything is panelized and everything is uh, is very very thinly uh, detailed so it's a, it's a very nice kit so far I think I will uh, quite enjoy it now we have the possibility of building the cockpit window open and you have the possibility of doing the so you could build basically the cockpit that's one of the options but I think I'll pass on the on this kit 
Now the clear parts, so the new things as well is the way they cut, it's more like the Zvezda kit I would say for the for the cockpit window and now they are doing as well, they are delivering the kit with the passenger window which is a big difference from the old 321 kit from Revel but uh, it's no longer available. So now we're moving up to the wings and the wings, the lower part of the wings look very similar to the old tooling I have to say. Uh, still it's it's a different it seems to be different yeah it is a different one but you have a lot of uh, similarity and the wings come in two parts this time compared to the old tooling uh, which was in three parts at that time so uh, it is really a completely different uh, new kit that is available to us so regarding the wings you have you don't have the options basically slats and flaps will be up uh, compared to some other kits here you have the uh, attachment point for the wings that we can we normally don't see that on any other uh, kit that's the new new thing uh, that's the landing the, uh, the nose wheel landing gear uh, hole and here are the vertical fins so that's uh, enough for, for that kit and enough of talking and let's start building so we're going to start uh, this build by uh, preparing the fuselage. So initially what we're going to do, we're going to prepare the fuselage and uh, the passenger window. So uh, we're going to prepare uh, all the parts and then we're going to glue the passenger window inside the fuselage using some uh, Revel glue. So uh, when uh, this will be uh, done, we're going to assemble the cockpit, but I'm not going to make any details as I decided to go on that build that uh, I will not uh, I will just use decals for the, the windscreen and the passenger window so uh, after that we're gonna put the wheel well uh, the nose wheel uh, well below the cockpit and then we're gonna add some uh, modeling paste some play-doh on the front just to uh, use it as a ballast to avoid to have the uh, airplane sitting on its tail. After we're gonna start gluing the fuselage all together and I will use some very thin uh, Tamiya glue uh, with a brush just to go into the, the little gaps I have and then that will give me a, a better bounding for that fuselage. After that I will put the radome uh, on, the, on the, the airplane and then we're gonna prepare the cockpit windows and uh, we're just gonna glue it straight on the, on the fuselage. Then uh, using also uh, some uh, some of this thin glue uh, to have a better bounding. Then we are going to work start working on the wings, and of course we'll have to uh, remove them. And then we're gonna clean the parts, and then we're gonna do the uh, adjustment together. So those wings are in just in two parts. There is the sandwich, and then you will have to add the sharklet uh, which is dedicated to Airbus uh, while this will be dried. So for that I had some uh, a little bit of a fitting problem uh, after that I uh, managed to glue it and I used some clamp to uh, to keep those uh, wings together then I add the sharklets and I glue them. So while the glue was drying it was time to fill up the gaps with uh, some uh, Tamiya putty and uh, we start to work on the fuselage so there were some gaps but very minor gaps on the top of the fuselage and I use also to fill up the gaps for the passenger windows and that work uh, very well then we're gonna let it dry of course and we're gonna be able to come back on our uh, wings and uh, of course fill up all the gaps once again Now that uh, the Tamiya putty has dried out, it's time to remove the uh, excess putty and uh, on those gaps. So uh, we are going to use uh, initially uh, a 600 uh, grid um, sandpaper and then later on we're going to use uh, 800 to uh, smooth it down. And uh, we're going to start that long and painful process of uh, sanding down the model. So once the sanding uh, was uh, completed, it was time to uh, rescribe some of the panel lines as uh, they were filled up with some putty as well uh, during the process. 
and after that we're gonna move on to our uh, wings. I have to say that I had some issue to uh, get the proper shape on the on the flap fairing, and uh, those were not really uh, at a proper shape and uh, and at a nice shape. So I had to do a lot of filling and sanding to get the proper uh, the proper ID. I think I really prefer the one I had on the uh, earlier uh, Revel Airbuses. After that, we had to uh, glue the the wings to the fuselage, and once again, I had a, a small uh, fitting problem. So uh, I was using some. Um, some um, adhesive tape to be able to to get to the proper uh, the proper shape after that of course uh, just a little bit of uh, removing and preparing the parts for the horizontal stabilizer and uh, then we were able to uh, glue the fin and then the horizontal stabilizer on the aircraft there was also a little bit of uh, a fiddling to do now we are going to work on the engines initially i will put a very uh, very light uh, green ring around those uh, those fans and then I'm going to start to add some putty while the paint is drying. I will add the putty on the, on the horizontal stabilizer and the junction of the, of the wings. So uh, there has been a little bit of uh, things to do, but nothing we could handle. After that, we came back uh, to uh, our engines. So I did uh, a ring around that uh, light green uh, color. And then I paint the fan and the nose cone uh, with a uh, matte black. And then of course I had to uh, let it dry and then uh, I'll paint the leading edge of those uh, those blades. While doing that, I finish up uh, to to sand, basically sand down all the windows. I had to refill a little bit because to, I wanted to really have a proper uh, a proper surface and then I sand down all, uh, all the rest and all the extra the extra putty on those um, on those panel lines. We're now gonna work on the leading edge of uh, our uh, engines on the leading edge of the fan blades basically so I use just a regular uh, silver paint um, an enamel uh, paint from uh, Humbrol and uh, I have to say that with a paintbrush uh, it does a really really nice trick so after that of course I had to do some correction on the nose cone as there was a little bit of uh, silver paint uh, on the nose cone so I had to repaint it in a in a matte black. After that, I use my uh, standard uh, Corregar uh, paint that uh, I use for the uh, interior of the engine itself. So there is another ring of color just before the the, cowl the engine cowling. After that, I uh, prepare the parts and uh, we're gonna do the assemble the assembly of that engine. So uh, initially, we're gonna put basically the fan disc, and the fan disc is, uh, is the smallest part, and then put the exhaust and then the sandwich part of, uh, of that uh, leap engine and then of course there will be a little bit of uh, a little bit later uh, we'll have to uh, fill up all the gaps with a, a little bit extra putty and once again I had I had some fitting issues on that kit but uh, nothing really too hard I have to say that uh, from my experience working on Zvezda, ski, Zvezda kits are, are much easier basically to handle uh, I don't have that much uh, that much little issues uh, when I work on Svesda instead of Revel. After finishing the engine, uh, the good thing we had on, the, on that kit, I have to say, uh, is you have the options of uh, three different satellite antenna, depending on which provider you have. It's in the uh, Ninmar Sat, Satcom or uh, Iridium, I think. Uh, and then you have the choice to put the, the one basically related to the aircraft you're gonna make. Then uh, it was time to go to the paint booth. So I uh, use a very light gray. It's a mix of a light gray and a white color. And I use that for the engine mount. Then I use a medium gray basically uh, with, for, the, for the wheels and the undercarriage. And then I start uh, painting the Corregar for the wings. And uh, for that I use my standard mix of uh, medium grey and metallic uh, paint together. So uh, after that I use some uh, metallic paint for the, for the engine uh, cowl anti eyes And uh, I paint the body of the engine on the plain white, um, glossy white colour from Tamiya.
So after finishing the grey paint and uh, covering the wings, it was time to do the final coat. And uh, for this, I use uh, a gloss white paint from Tamiya, and I have to say it worked uh, very, very well. Uh, I have normally I mixed uh, the white paint with some uh, thinner, and the mix ratio is about sixty uh, percent. Um, I mean, I would say I put about thirty to fifty percent of thinner with the with the paint. And that then give me a, a very nice liquid paint, easy to uh, to work with and uh, to cover on a big surface. After that, we let it dry, and of course, uh, it was time to remove all the uh, all the covers. And then we start painting the the wheels and uh, start to work on the undercarriage. So for the undercarriage and the and the tires, I uh, I normally work with some. Uh, black uh, matte black paint from Tamiya and then the struts where uh, I use the same uh, silver color. After that we start to paint uh, the, the some details on the engines and the exhaust of the engines are on uh, on that dark metallic paint. Um, it's mainly I would say dark steel uh, paint and then I use uh, for the, the medium the intermediate part of the of that engine I used um, some regular metallic paint. It's uh, more or less a uh, silver color and uh, I have to say after that you can use some uh, weathering techniques and, and that give you the pretty well, uh, a pretty good finish. So uh, once we finish that uh, it was time to assemble the, uh, the main landing gear. Pretty easy to do so. And uh, then uh, preparing the nose landing gear. There was a little bit of a fiddling and adjustments as it's, it was in uh, two or three parts. And uh, after that, let it dry, of course, try to fill it, uh, re-glue it a little bit and then let it dry for a, for a little bit uh, longer. After that, I tried to do some weathering and I had a little brush which didn't work, so I used the, the makeup tool of my wife and I have to say that it worked very well. Uh, after that, we did the, uh, the undercarriage uh, protection or uh, the cover and then we glue them together and then it will be time to do the to assemble and to put basically the the nose landing gear into position and then uh, we'll start uh, decaling the aircraft so uh, the decaling i used some uh, nasca decals and i have to say that i'm very very pleased with the work of uh, of gaston is uh, is doing really beautiful kits. Even I had sometimes some uh, some uh, orders issues, but he fixed them very quickly. It's very easy to work with, and the quality of those decals are fantastic. I really love those decals. Lot of a uh, lot of precision, a lot of realistic effects, and uh, yeah. So uh, you will see maybe some more of his uh, some more of his decals on my uh, future models. So. Um, to come back to the decals and the decaling process, everything went very smooth. There was no major, there was no issue at all. I have to say, uh, no surface, no irregular surface to be covered, so it was not too challenging. And uh, after that, uh, once we finish a part of the decal, I put the undercarriage on the aircraft. And uh, again, I had to, uh, to do some little fix, but uh, nothing, nothing we couldn't handle. I mean, it was pretty easy. So uh, once uh, this was uh, finished, we finished the decaling process and uh, let's see how does it work. So after decaling the last part of those engines, it's time to put the uh, anti-ice on them and then uh, do a little bit of uh, paint uh, to paint the, the rotating beacon. Now we're gonna fix and put the engine, mount the engine on the aircraft. And uh, I have to say that that was an easy part, uh, was uh, nothing major, no uh, fitting issues, I have to say. And then we're gonna finish some uh, small decals like the static uh, boards, the pito, and um, all the all the rest after that the last part will be uh, to uh, add some uh, small details like uh, the antenna and for these i normally uh, use some plastic card 
and I'm just cutting them myself at the proper size as they are much thinner and they are really at a better scale compared to what I would have uh, if I take the one who are in the kit. So uh, after that we uh, did the last uh, final touch up with the undercarriage, um, with the tires and the plane was ready for display. So uh, this is the final result of that uh, Airbus A321 Neo from Rival. Uh, I have to say that it was an enjoyable kit. I would prefer a Zvezda kit over a Revel kit, but I have to say that it's, there is no major difficulty, even a beginner can, uh, could solve those issues. So I hope you enjoyed that video with me. If you did so, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you soon for another build review and another video. Thank you for watching.